Okay, and then of course you can use bait products like Sluggo, which has iron phosphate, um, and Sluggo is a little bit more safe uh, than, than the metaldehyde ones. Um, if you use any of these metaldehyde ones, make sure you uh, protect your domestic pets because these are toxic. Okay, whereas this is a, a little slower action, but it's safer. Um, well, Sluggo works by interfering with their digestion, whereas uh, the, the metaldehyde granules uh, work by um, uh, once the, the slug or the snail crawls on them, it causes uh, increased mucus secretion, so the uh, slug dies from dehydration, and that's a little quicker. Is the slime carried into? Yeah. Yeah, we've done some testing, and, and the slime is uh, probably about tenfold less, has, has a tenfold less parasite load, so whether you'd get infected, you'd have a, um, if you did happen to eat some slime, especially if it's dried, uh, these larvae don't live in dry. You know, so it's a lot, lot lower chance of infection. Yeah, that's <laughs> so. So that, well, we'll be getting to that. Okay, well, I have a whole section on catchment. Yeah. Okay. So controlling rats. Um, you want to just say a few words about rat control, Stephen? Aloha, neighbors. Uh, my name is Steven, Steven Jacquier, and I live about a mile uphill from Leilani Estates, uh, across 130 from Leilani Estates. But for a year I lived down in HPP, and a lot of the uh, photos of the uh, larvae and adult worms that you see here come out of rats and out of slugs that we collected in HPP and up around uh, my place. So, and also down at Kapoho, uh, Kay has a sister down there. So a lot of these images are directly out of organisms that we harvested right here in Pune. Now, one of those organisms uh, that uh, uh, researchers in Australia, a couple of friends of mine down there in Australia, believe may constitute a weak link in the life cycle of rat lungworm are the rats. Uh, the rats are very long-lived. Uh, they poop everywhere they go. Uh, and if their poop is infectious with the larvae, then basically they're seeding those, those uh, first, second stage larvae into, well, first stage into the uh, uh, invertebrates, into the slugs and snails. And that raises your risk. Everything that we can do to lower our risk improves our odds of staying healthy against this stuff. So if we can target rats, and we know that around here, rats are always going to be moving in. There's a lot of population pressure from the wild forest. And they're going to be moving in all the time. And yet, uh, an active uh, uh, campaign against rats might be significant in reducing our risk overall. Uh, a couple of ways to do that that we found uh, are trapping. And there are a number of different ways to do the traps. I myself prefer these nice traps that click, and they're very easy to set. They, you can get these at Home Depot, just about anywhere, really. And notice that well in the center there. You pack that well solid with uh, peanut butter, and what I do is I mix the peanut butter together with a fire ant bait. Uh, you put these all over everywhere. And it lets you know really quick whether you've got fire ants coming across the property line. Uh, and kind of serves to knock them back a bit as well. Uh, notice, notice this peanut butter jar here. I don't know if you can see it from where you're at. But the, uh, the rats were so eager to get at it that they went right through the lid. Okay? Uh, and by the way, a friend of mine's house burned down in, uh, in HPP on the 1st of April. Uh, she was actually at Home Depot getting, getting materials, and the phone rings, and it, it's a neighbor saying, your house burned down. She said, yeah, right. Good try. April Fool's, right? And no, no, really. Your house burned down. And this isn't funny. The cop comes on the line. Sorry, ma'am. Your house really did burn down. Wiring. Okay? There's more than one reason to get rid of these rats around here. I myself have gone into houses up in the attics and so on and seen chewed, chewed wires. These things also carry tapeworms, viruses, and so on. So if you bait around the perimeter of your property, 
eliminate as much mess as you can. You know, those old stacks of boards and buckets and so on. Get rid of those things. If you're not actually using them, get rid of them. They shelter slugs, they shelter rats. And uh, the rats uh, bring all sorts of problems uh, onto your property. But if you pack the wells of these things with uh, peanut butter mixed with uh, ant or fire ant bait, then it's really effective. And it's real easy to get rid of the rats too without even having to touch them, okay? And what I do is I just leave a couple of big rocks near banana trees or whatever. I roll the rock back, roll the rock back over it, disposal accomplished, right? Because you know how easy it is to dig in the dirt around here. I see, I see some hands out, out there, and I'd love to answer those questions, but we're going to uh, take Q&A at the end if I'm uh, Yeah. So hang on to those questions. Make a note of them if you think you might forget, and we're going to come back to, to those later on. Uh, there, uh, an urgent question here. Yes, there is, a, there is something called rat bite fever. Uh, it's one of the reasons why it costs about $60,000 to do one clinical trial in our laboratory because we have to do everything by the book and we have to make sure that our students at UHH are not bitten, okay? We have to wear Kevlar gloves when we're handling these things. Uh, so yeah, you want to do everything you can to avoid being bitten by a rat. And if it didn't kill it when it snapped in there, uh, then by all means use tongs or something else to take the, the trap and rat entire and either introduce it to a big heavy rock uh, or a bucket of water. And by the way, another way to do this, and I should mention, uh, if you have uh, poultry, uh, uh, chickens, geese are great at eating slugs. They don't appear to have ill effects. Guinea fowl not only eats slugs but uh, cookie frogs as well. Uh, they are noisy creatures though. Uh, but if you have any uh, animals, such as birds, uh, small children, cats, dogs, whatever, that might get into these traps, then what you can do is simply put them underneath a crate. As long as a rat's skull will fit through a hole, the rest of the rat will follow. And that's why they gnaw on the wood in your walls. As, long as, as soon as they can get their head through, the rest of them can get through too. So if you have a box or a crate and you say, oh, a rat skull wouldn't fit through that, then make it a little bit larger and put it inside there. And the you, next time you come by and take the crate off, there'll be a dead rat in there. Uh, but uh, it'll protect the, the other animals that you don't want in the, in the traps. Another way to do it, uh, Peace Corps volunteers in Africa have had good luck with using a bucket. Uh, dig it down at ground level, put a string across the top, put something like a corn cob baited with uh, peanut butter on the string in the middle, put water up to about here in the bucket, pour a little bit of mineral oil in there so that mosquito larvae will suffocate. They won't be able to breathe, otherwise you're just breeding mosquitoes, right? And you, uh, apparently, I haven't done this myself, but I'm told by returned Peace Corps volunteers that uh, you can find like 10 rats, 12 rats, because they'll just keep coming out, falling down in there. They twirl around on the bait that you put out there. Sometimes they use a ball with a, uh, a hole drilled through it. And they grab onto it, they get lazy and greedy, and they fall in and they drown in the bucket. So that's another approach that uh, apparently is successful, at least in Africa. Uh, Folks, one of the, uh, these are active strategies against rats. There's also some sort of backdoor strategies uh, that will help a great deal. Anytime you leave a bowl of kibble out on the lanai for your cats, your dogs, you're just setting up a rat feeding station. Seriously. Uh, please, don't, don't leave, for what, two reasons. Don't leave the kibble out on the lanai partially because you don't want to be setting up a feeding station for, for vermin, and partially because slugs are also attracted to that stuff. Slugs will crawl into the food dish, the water dish, then your dog comes along, eats the slug along with the, uh, the food, and can develop uh, serious impairments. My uh, researcher friends down in Australia tell me that every year at the beginning of the wet season, midway into the wet season, they see an epidemic of dogs coming into the clinics there. Dogs that have always been sweet, happy, kind dogs, acting erratic, growling, snapping, biting. 
Well, when they open up their brains and do an autopsy, they find that uh, there's rat lungworms in there disturbing the dogs. So uh, take those, those bowls of kibble off the lanai, please. <laughs> there are some other strategies. Uh, if you want to uh, explore them further with me, then uh, let me know during Q&A or get with me afterwards.